Alright guys, in this video, I want to introduce you all to a library with which we can add charts to our React application. The package we will be making use of is React Charts 2. Although another library called Recharts exists for the same reason, I prefer this over Recharts which is a bit more bulkier. So typically, you would need this package if you are building an application to visualize data and get some analytics. Different types of charts such as line, bar, radar, donut and a mix of them can be added to your React project. Let's begin. As always, I have started off by creating a new project using create react app. Now open the terminal and run the command yarn add react hyphen chart js hyphen to space chart dot js chart dot js is a peer dependency for this library once the command completes we can get started with our code i'm going to head over to app.js and clear out the header section Next, I'm going to create a new folder called components. So within the source folder, a new folder called components. In this folder, we are going to create our chart components. Now the chart.js library offers several different charts for us to use. For this video, I'm going to focus on three of them. A line chart, a bar chart, and a donut chart. You will get an understanding on how the library works but as always I'm going to leave the different props and configurations for you to explore based on your requirements. Alright then let's get started with a line chart. In the components folder I'm going to create a new file called linechart.js. Within this file I'm going to use the snippet rfce to create a function component. Next, we are going to import line from the chart.js library. So import, it's a named import. So line from react chart.js to. This line component is used to add a line chart. The line component has one mandatory prop, which is the data prop. This is pretty much the data that you want to visualize through a line chart. So let's see the structure of this data object that we need to specify. I'm going to create a new constant called data, which is an object. Now the data on the x-axis needs to contain labels. For that, we use the labels property. For our example, Let's see how to visually represent sales data over a period of five months. So labels is going to be an array of five strings. Jan, Feb, March, April, and May. Now that we have the labels, next we need to specify the data itself. The property is called data sets. And this is an array of objects. Each object corresponds to one line in our line chart. Let's keep it simple and include just the one object for now. For our data set, we first need to specify a label. I'm going to call this sales for 2020 in millions. Next, we need to specify the actual data itself. So the property is called data, which is an array where each value corresponds to a month. So sales in January was 3 million, Feb was 2 million, March 2 million again, April 1 and May 5. And this is pretty much all we need to visualize our data. Let's pass in the constant as the value to the data prop. So data is equal to data. All right, our line chart is now ready. 
back in app.js, I'm going to add a div tag with a class called chart. And then within the div tag, I'm going to specify the line chart component. I'm also going to add some CSS in the app.css file. On the app class itself, display flex, justify content center, and then the chart class, just going to set a width of 720 pixels. All right, let's save the file, open the terminal, and run the command yarn start. If you take a look at the browser, our line chart is not rendering as we expected it to. And if I go back to the code, I've made the mistake of camel casing the word data sets. This should be all lowercase. So now if you save this and go back to the browser, you can see that our line chart is rendering as expected. You can see that on the x-axis, we have the months, Jan up to May. And on the y-axis, we have the value in millions. If you hover on the data point, you can see what the value is. For Jan, it is 3 million. Feb, it is 2 million. And May, it is 5 million. So the line chart works pretty well. Now let's go back to VS Code and add another data set. So this is an array. I'm going to add another object. The label this time is going to be sales for the year 2019. So sales for 2019 in millions. And the data, let's add five more values. One, three, two, two, three. Again, these are in millions. If we now take a look at the browser, you can see that we now have two data sets, one for sales in 2020 and the other in 2019. However, it's a bit difficult to understand this because both are of the same color. Let's go back and change that. On the first data set, I'm going to copy paste a few properties. So within the first data set object, paste it. Here, border color and background color correspond to the line and the area underneath the line. The point background color and the point border color correspond to the data points. The value is an array which accepts RGBA values. I have specified one such value. This is the same value for all the four properties. Similarly, for the second data set, I'm going to copy paste a different color for the same set of properties. If you now save the file and take a look at the browser, you can see that the chart is much better. And what is also possible is if you click on the legend for a particular data set, it gets hidden and you can only focus on the other data set. So you can toggle the visibility of one or more data sets in your chart. The last thing I want to talk about is the Y axis. Right now, you can see that the chart automatically starts at one, which is our lowest value. Let's change this to start at zero and end at a value of six with a step size of one. Now to specify configurations, we pass in another prop called options. This again is an object. For our line chart, let's add in a title and also the scale for our Y axis. So I'm going to collapse data, add a new constant, const options is equal to an object, title, is an object where we say display to true and then text to line chart. The next option we are going to specify is scales. This for the Y axis, it's an array of objects and we're going to set ticks to minimum start at zero, maximum, which is end at six, 
and a step size of 1. Now there is no other way than to refer to the documentation to get to know the different options available. First I have mentioned that we need to display the title and the text is line chart. Next we inform that the scales and y axis in particular, we want the ticks to start at 0 and at 6 and increment with a step size of 1. Finally, we pass in this value to the options prop. If you now take a look at the browser, you can see that the chart title is at the top, line chart, and also our y axis is as per our requirement. Starts at 0, ends at 6, and a step size of 1. So this is our example of a line chart. Now let's move on to our second type of chart, which is the bar chart. And trust me, once you understand the data and options for one chart, understanding the other types won't take much effort. I'm going to create a new file in the components folder called barchart.js. To save us some time, I'm going to copy paste the code from our line chart component and make any modifications necessary. So copy, paste it. First change, I'm going to replace all occurrences of line with bar. So import bar at the top and the component is going to be bar chart. Our title is going to be bar chart component invocation again is going to be bar and we're going to export bar chart. I'm going to change all of them at the same time. Let's save this file, include it in app.js and test it out. I'm going to comment out the line chart, include bar chart, save this and go back to the browser. All right, on page load, we can see that the bar chart is rendering, which is good. The x-axis remains the same and the y-axis also remains the same. The only problem we have is the color not reflecting on all the months. And this is because of the slight variation in the two charts. For a bar chart, we need to specify an array of colors, one each for the bar represented. So I'm going to go back to VS Code and duplicate each of the color five times. All right, and now I can also get rid of the point colors. That is applicable only on the line chart. Let's format this, save this, and take a look at the browser. You can see that our bar chart works as expected. Again, you can hide or show the different data sets. All right, for our final chart, let's take a look at a donut chart. It is pretty much like a pie chart, but is hollow in the center. In the components folder, I'm going to create a new file called donutchart.js. Again, to save us the time, I'm going to copy paste the bar chart code and make the necessary changes. Copy, paste. And first, let's replace all occurrences of bar with donut. Next, I'm going to get rid of the scale because scales don't apply to a donut chart. Let's also stick to just one data set. All right, save the file, include it in app.js, and let's test it out. If I go back to the browser, we can notice that all the slices of the donut are of the same color. So for a donut, we need to make sure we specify separate colors. This is different from a bar chart. 
I'm going to go back to VS Code, do another chart.js, and I'm going to copy paste different sets of colors. So background color, I'm going to change it. And I'm going to get rid of the border color, which will default to white, which is what I want as well. If you now take a look at the browser, the chart looks way better. We have the different values on hover and each of these colors correspond to a label. And again, you can toggle the visibility of a particular value. So there you go three different charts implemented using the package React Chart.js2. What I like to mention is that there are a few more types of charts that you can use in your application. There is a pie chart, radar chart, bubble chart, and so on. There are also different options depending on the chart type that can be configured. So the next time you want to add some data visualization, you now have a package to use. With that, we come to the end of this practical React series. I hope you now have a few packages in your React toolkit and know when to use them. I wanted to also add React table to the playlist, but I feel that there is so much in that package, an entirely new series would be better for tables in React. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and until next time, take care.